My name is Danielle Glosson, and I'm in the Masters of Entrepreneurship program at Western Carolina University. Today I will review bookkeeping and how to produce an efficient filing system. Bookkeepers and accountants are both knowledgeable in accounting, but bookkeepers record the data and generate financial statements while accountants interpret, analyze, classify, report, and summarize financial statements produced by the bookkeepers. In small businesses, you may find a bookkeeper taking on an accountant's job responsibilities, but in most cases, accountants serve as advisors to bookkeepers. The bookkeeper provides three financial statements, an income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. All transactions for each statement must be logged. Journals or diaries that used to be written by hand are usually in a software system in today's society to use to log these transactions. The transactions include purchases, sales, receipts, and payments that have been made by the business. Again, these transactions are logged in a daybook, supplier's ledger, customer's ledger, or general ledger. The ledger is a permanent summary that lists the transactions by date. The transaction flow from a journal to one or more ledgers. The summary totals in the ledgers generate a company's financial statements. The sales ledger records accounts receivable and consists of financial transactions made by customers. The purchase ledger records money spent for purchasing equipment, office supplies, and other items for company production. The general ledger represents five main account types including assets, liabilities, income, expenses, and equity. For every debit recorded, there's a corresponding credit. Debit is expenses and credit is revenues. Debit and credit should equal in the grand totals and if they do not, a bookkeeper will know there's an error. Depending on the size of a business and the amount of daily transactions, the ledgers may not be used. Small businesses with few employees, low volume of daily transactions that own a few expensive physical assets are more likely to use a single entry system. A single entry system records each transaction once and resembles balancing a checkbook. This system is a simple and inexpensive compared to a double entry system. Examples of a single entry system for a small business include a business checkbook, a journal of check disbursements, daily, monthly summaries of cash receipts, employee wages, and ledgers showing the debit and credit balances. The biggest disadvantages for a single entry system since it does not include the debit and credits are the mathematical errors theft, and other losses that go to undetected, and it becomes difficult to plan and control business with the given data. A double entry system is most commonly practiced in business. Every transaction will affect two ledger accounts and involves a debit entry in one and a credit in the other. Most bookie bookkeeping entries designate the left side of the account as the debit and the right as the credit. You will debit the cash account when cash is received and credit the cash account when cash is paid out. Differing from the single entry system, a double entry system allows a business to maintain a complete record of every transaction where they can easily use the data to build financial statements. The trial balance helps maintain accuracy of all accounts and the checks and balances prevent fraud and mathematical errors in preparation of the balance sheet. The company can accurately assess the profit earned or loss suffered during a period and can compare results to past years or periods. Double entry systems can be very beneficial for bookkeepers, but it's complex and difficult to understand. The overall cost can be high maintaining a double entry system and can increase in cost as the accounts become more complex. The system requires a significant amount of time and must consistently cross-check every entry. Although the trial balance reduces mathematical errors, an entire financial transaction can go unnoticed if it's not recorded in the book of accounts. So here's an example of a single entry system. You'll see over here that there's a running total just like a checkbook. And so it's the simplest form, um, mainly used for small businesses. So um, when funds are received, you see the positive number here on the right hand side. And um, when funds are paid out, you see the parentheses resulting in the negative. Okay, and so now here's a double entry example. So the transaction, the reference here is 299 
and the credit card statement for December was $150, and the individual charges are listed separately. So the $75 for the office supplies, $25 for fuel, and $50 for the magazine subscription. So for the accounts payable, you're crediting that $150, but each of these um, descriptive items are debited for um, you know, taking out of that account. Okay, so a filing system. Once the bookkeeper produces the financial statement, it becomes important to produce or to store the files in a well-organized system for efficiency purposes. There are several ways to organize files, and it becomes the organization's preference on how they decide to organize the files. So alphabetic filing is the grouping of documents by letters from A to Z. The files or entries are sequenced letter by letter. The indefinite and definite articles like A or the are ignored in the entry titles. Abbreviated names are filed according to abbreviated letter sequence. The shorter the entries, they'll come first, and the personal names are usually filed by last name. Numerical filing. So that's um, that refers to the documents that are pre-numbered to distinguish them from other um, from each other or from alpha documents. So numerical filing can begin with the lowest number and climb to the highest numbers. Um, the files can also be grouped in tens, hundreds, or thousands and can have subsections introduced by the addition of a decimal point or alphabetic letter. This numerical filing system is twice as fast as um, filing alphabetically. The disadvantage is that an index must be made knowing what file represents each number. Okay, so the geographic filing system, that's most used for countries that have differing laws or licenses. Um, this method is not very popular, and um, it would have a sub-filing method, like alphabetically or numerically, for each geographic region. The, um, the chronological filing is arranging the material by date. So this system is useful if your business needs to relicense employees or customers or action needs to be taken on a recurring basis. It is critical that the files are itemized according to day and the date received. This system requires an index and becomes very time consuming. So last there is the subject filing and this is the arranging of material by subject. This is the most difficult of all methods and demands the person installing the system to have a complex knowledge of the business. So here are a couple of filing tips you can develop for your filing system. Um, the space. So you don't want to tightly pack the files. It'll slow down the efficiency. The index guide. Um, so for active files, um, putting them back in a specific folder. The folder tabs. So you want a consistent height and you want it to be clearly legible. File overload. Um, you don't want to pack the files too tight. It'll drag them down. Note files that are in use. So you can create a sign-in or sign-out sheet for files that are taken out. That way you, files don't get lost. And then maintaining security. So a security system should be installed that allows um, specific individuals to access confidential files. So uh, thank you guys for joining me today. And... I hope you learned something about bookkeeping and a proper filing system.